Hello and welcome to our new lecture of the English novel. Today we have a new novel which is entitled as A Portrait of the Artist as a Young Man by James Joyce. We are going to discuss this novel chapter by chapter and then we will add some critical questions and critical comments. Without further ado, let's get started. First, we will start with the main questions of any literary work, and then we will try to answer all of them throughout the lecture. First, who is the author? What is this novel about? Type, techniques, and setting. Why it matters? What is its impact on the reader? What are the plot and the main themes? Who are the main characters of this novel? First, let's answer, who is James Joyce? Joyce is the oldest of ten children in his family. His father was not the man to stay affluent for long. He drank, neglected his affairs, and borrowed money from his office, and his family sank deeper and deeper into poverty. هاتان الصفتان بالإضافة إلى العديد من الصفات الأخرى التي هي موجودة بالفعل في حياة جويس تمت الإشارة لها في الرواية In April 1893, he and his brother Stanislaus were admitted without fees to Belvedere College and Jesuit Grammar School in Dublin Joyce did well there academically He left however under a cloud as it was thought correctly that he had lost his Roman Catholic faith. He entered University College Dublin, which was then staffed by Jesuit priests. He wrote and published many literary works. This early success confirmed Joyce in his resolution to become a writer and persuaded his family, friends and teachers that the resolution was justified. Recalled home in April 1903, because his mother was dying, he tried various occupations throughout his life. Now we come to the novel itself, which is a portrait of the artist as a young man. It is a masterpiece of modern fiction. James Joyce's semi-autobiographical first novel follows Stephen Dudless, a sensitive and creative youth who rebels against his family, his education and his country by committing himself to the artist's life. First, it is a slice of Dubliners, a previous novel. وهذه كانت إحدى روايات جيمس جويس وممكن أن نقول أن هذه الرواية حاليا a portrait is uh, derived from Dubliners. The second point is, it's a historical document لأنها تحوي الكثير من المعلومات عن تاريخ إيرلندا. Three, art imitating real life, the streets, the shops, and the life of the author. Four, it is the play with language. It was a thousand-page manuscript and condensed to be in one small novel. بمعنى أن الكاتب ابتدأ هذه الرواية بكتابة ألف صفحة ثم بعد ذلك قام بتقليص هذا العدد لتظهر الرواية على شكلها الحالي The mixing between myth throughout an indirect reference with real life The evaluation of a simple person to a man full of knowledge and awareness the escaping of a hard life of Stephen Dudless, who represents the author himself. Seven, the writing method, which is kind of postmodern method of writing. The writing is similar to that of Virginia Woolf. Last but not least, the early adaptation of the theory of stream of consciousness, which is the moving between the experience of Stephen as a hero, and then we find ourselves in the mind of this character. Now we come to the main characters in the novel. First we have the protagonist, who is Stephen Dedalus, the main character of the novel. Growing up, Stephen goes through long phases of hedonism and deep religiosity. He eventually adapts a philosophy of an aesthetic method, greatly valuing beauty and art. 
Stephen is essentially Joyce's alter ego, and many of the events of Stephen's life mirror events from Joyce's own youth. لذلك مو منذ بداية التعليق على الرواية قلنا بأن هذه الشخصية اللي هي ستيفن تمثل جيمس جويس himself. We also have Simon Dudless who's Stephen's father and Mary Dudless who's Stephen's mother. Emma Clary, Stephen's beloved and Crantley, Stephen's best friend at the university. So those are the main characters in addition to many other sub-characters who really affected and interacted in the life of Stephen Dudless. This chapter has several important points that need to be highlighted, such as the early life of Stephen and his memories and surroundings. We also have the time at Klangos Wood College, the early life of Stephen, how he is small, weak and short-sighted and these affected his interaction with his friends and made him get bullied all the time. We have the Christmas dinner which is one of the most important parts of this chapter. We also have the glasses incident that we are going to talk about later and finally his name and its relation to the Greek myth and why the author named him this way. First let's talk about the Christmas dinner. Parnell who is one of the main politicians of Ireland who calls for its independence from England was the main subject that the people who were around the table were discussing his death and his death becomes more significant in the following scene. When Stephen returns home to celebrate Christmas, at the Christmas dinner are Stephen's parents, Mary and Simon, John Casey, a friend of Simon's, Stephen's great-uncle, Charles, and Stephen's old nurse, Dante. Stephen is particularly excited because for the first time in his life, he is sitting at the table with the adults. Casey, a staunch supporter of Parnell's cause, defends Parnell against the injustice committed against him and his cause by the Irish people and by the Catholic Church. According to Casey, the church pounded Parnell into his grave. The argument naturally includes mention of Parnell's highly publicized love affair with a married woman, Kitty O'Shea. And Dantley strongly defends the church's censure of Parnell's involvement with Kitty. Casey says that because the church interfered with secular matters, it thereby ended a political career which had seemed to promise home rule for Ireland. The argument escalates with an exchange of insults and concludes with Dante triumphantly shouting, We crush him to death. She slams the door, leaving Simon and Casey weeping over the loss of their beloved hero. This part of the novel gave us an idea about the environment that Stephen raised up within, how political views are exchanged around him, and how he will interfere with these views later on in the novel. Now we come to the part of the glasses incident. Stephen has suffered from the cruelty of his classmates. كما قلنا سابقا بأنه كان ضعيف البنية قصير القامة ضعيف النظر. Specifically, he was pushed in the filthy ditch of water, and later a classmate caused him to break his glasses on the cinder path. But Stephen has yet to experience injustice from a clerk, a man who is supposed to represent the kindness and mercy of the Catholic faith. Ironically, the sadistic father, Dolan, not only fails to hear the boy's confession of innocence, but he also oversteps his station by taking pleasure in paddling Stephen mercilessly in front of the class. Momentarily, Stephen's faith seems to fail him, but he finds a solution to the injustice he has suffered in the chorus of classmates as they cry out in classical echoes of Roman crowds demanding democratic justice. 
Stephen's solution seems clear. He knows that he must visit the school's rector in order to clear his good name and report Father Dolan's injustice. بعض زملاء ستيفن دفعوهم ما أدى إلى كسر نظارته وتلقى عقوبة لعدم إكماله الواجب المترتب عليه للدراسة فكان لستيفن موقف قوي حيث أنه أصر على الذهاب إلى مدير الكلية أو عميد الكلية والتحدث معه في هذا الأمر وعندها سمع له الشخص المسؤول ووعده أنه سيقف إلى جانبه إلى أن يحقق العدالة التي يستحقها هذا الأمر جعل ستيفن يبدو كبطلا في عيون زملائه لأنه الوحيد الذي لم يسكت على الباطل وذهب ليفصح عنه ويبلغ عن هذا الأمر أحد الأمور المهمة التي تعكس شخصية ستيفن هي اسمه The significance of his name The Dallas is a figure from Greek mythology famous for his clever inventions and as the architect of the Manitor Labyrinth Matahat Manitor on Crete uh, He is also the father of Icarus who flew too close to the sun on his artificial wings and so drowned in the Mediterranean by the Roman period The Dallas had acquired a long string of accomplishment and he came to represent in general the supreme master craftsman العلاقة بين اسم ستيفن والأسطورة الإغريقية القديمة وإن كان الإسمان لا يتطابقان حيث أن شخصيتنا اسمها ستيفن دادلس بينما الشخصية الإغريقية اسمها دالس حيث أن ابن هذه الشخصية الإغريقية صنع جناحين من الشمع وطار بهما هاربا من السجن الذي عاش فيه ولكنه لم يكن حكيما كفاية حيث أنه اقترب من الشمس مما أدى إلى ذوبان الشمع وسقوطه في البحر الأبيض المتوسط وموته Now we have some critical questions that we need to focus on First, what is the significance of the following? First, the Christmas dinner The broken glasses incidents The name of Stephen Dudless These were all discussed earlier, so please pay more attention to them so we can discuss later. The other question is, Joyce says that evening was coming. What does he imply? ما الذي أراد قوله عندما صرح بهذا الأمر؟ ما المعنى المخفي أو ما المعنى الخفي الذي أراد أن يقوله جيمس جويس؟ هذا الأمر موجود في المحاضرة المكتوبة. أرجو الرجوع لها وإجابة هذا السؤال. Some of the important themes we can find in this novel, I mean the whole novel, not just this chapter, which are political environment, religion, family, the development of the artist, love and relationship, sins and forgiveness. So we need to pay attention to these themes throughout our reading and discussing of the full novel. This is the end of our lecture and I hope to see you in the next one.